of you to open your hearts, to open your spirits, and to, to come seeking him right now in this moment. We're praying for friends who are in the hospital. We're praying for our, our sister nation of Israel. We're praying for so many things tonight, but I'm inviting each one of us to position our hearts as we worship to hear from our bridegroom king. That is the voice we want to come in agreement with. That is the voice we want to partner with and we want to echo tonight. So I bless each one of you. I bless you, our online family. Thanks for being with us tonight. Go ahead and share this in your socials. Maybe invite others. We're going to be interceding big time tonight, and we want to hear your voices too. So if you receive something from the Lord, would you put that in the chat? And perhaps at some point we'll be able to um, share that over the microphone tonight so we can all be in agreement together. So welcome, and thank you for being with us. Thank you, Jubilee, for coming. Thank you for praying. Let's pray right now. Let's just focus our attention on the King of kings and the Lord of lords. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord most high, God of heaven and God of earth, King over all the universe. Here we are, God, your bride, your children, your servants, your bond servants, God. We come to yield our hearts to you as vessels for the master's use tonight. We lay down our understanding. We lay down everything we've brought with us tonight at your feet, and we say, Father, we're here to receive and release what it is your spirit is saying in this moment right now. If there's something that we've brought that you want us to agree with in prayer, then put your finger on that, Lord. But whatever way you want to direct us, we're here to follow your lead. We're here to follow you, Jesus. Come and move among us, Holy Spirit. We have a great expectation of your presence, of your power, of your spirit. Come, Lord, and have your way in our midst as we worship you. In Jesus' name, amen.
Jesus, he truly is bigger than we can see, better than we can dream. Lord, I just thank you for the opportunity to encourage my brothers and sisters, myself, at time of offering. A little story. This week, my dear baby, 16-year-old, <laughs> asked me after a year and a half of working, Mom, I'm ready. Would you show me how to give my time? Sorry about the emotion, but I had prayed for this from the day that she started working that God would speak to her about it because I could give her the lessons and the scriptures and the understanding and tell her what I'd done. But the moment I told her, I knew that it was going to hit her heart like, but that's mine. <laughs> and it did, because <laughs> that's what little kids do, mine, mine. But Holy Spirit's been working on her, so she asked me, Mom, help me, and I said, I will. So I did, and I helped her, but then we changed it up this Sunday, and instead of doing it online, we're going to do it by our tithe envelopes, so I showed her how to fill it out on Sunday, and in showing her how to do it, Holy Spirit prompted me to give an offering above her tithe as a thank offering to my father for moving in the heart of my child, Yes. and she says, well, but mom, if I'm tithing, shouldn't I give that? I said, oh, no, babe. You may give an offering, if you so desire, above your tithe as a thankfulness to God for what he's done in your life, provision. Because you see, daughter, the tithe isn't just a 10% of what he has given unto you in your resources. The tithe is everything. It's who you are, the gifting and abilities he's got inside you that he's growing inside you. It's your time. It's your talents, your resources, and the affections of your heart. What you set your attention on, and he's going to grow you in that all your life. So he's grown me in that, so I can freely say, God, here's more than my tithe as a thank offering. Now, I'm not bragging because we're supposed to, you know, don't let the right hand know what your left hand is doing, but I wanted to just encourage you. God is encouraging us with expectation and anticipation, as in Malachi 3.10, Bring the tithe into my storehouse and see if I won't open up the windows of heaven and pour out a blessing so big enough that you can't receive it. I want to tell you, he keeps bringing that back to me, not only in the resources, which have, you've heard my testimony just recently, but in that abundant expectation and anticipation, opening the heart of my child, bringing more freedom and deliverance in worship and adoration for my son, who the world has placed many limitations on and incapacities, but no in the name of Jesus. So I just want to say, when God is moving on you, online family here in the church, to give, give of that tithe willingly and quickly, and then look, listen, and wait for not only the, the windows of heaven to open, 
in your resources, but how he's going to expand you to give out of your self, your time and your talents and the affections of your heart and more prayer, whether it's the watches, whether it's in worship, whether it's in sowing into another believer in text online or in prayer, God is going to break open the windows of heaven and pour out resources of the spiritual capacity by the word to increase and multiply the kingdom of God because that's how his economy works. So Father, I thank you for this time of offering and tithe. We freely and willingly, Lord, quickly bring the tithe into your storehouse of all that you have given us, resources, talents, and the affections of our heart. And we ask that you would increase our capacity to give back unto you because it all belongs to you, Jesus. You get all the glory and continue to increase and multiply this great expectation inside of us. All for your glory in Jesus' name. So the bucket is being passed around. And again, if you have a tither and offering to give, hallelujah. If you don't, shout a blessing into that bucket. Hallelujah. There's just some battles flesh and blood can't win There'll be some moments that just don't make sense I can't see it now, but I'm still convinced There's just some problems only God can fix There's just some battles flesh and blood can't win There'll be some moments that just don't make sense I can't say it now, but I'm still convinced There's just some problems only God can fix not by power, not by might, by the Spirit of the living, Spirit of the living God. Not by battle, not by fight, by the Spirit of the living, Spirit of the living God. a breakthrough that I can't explain I found a healing hidden in my pain I know a dead man that once robbed the grave I've seen a breakthrough Spirit of the living, spirit of the living, not 
fortress, my refuge, still a strong tower, still a strong tower, and my helper, defender, still a strong tower, still a strong tower. Oh, oh, oh. Someone let the people know anything is possible, my weapon will prosper. Still a strong tower, still a strong tower, my fortress. My refuge, still a strong tower, still a strong tower. My helper, defender, still a strong tower, still a strong tower. Oh, someone let the devil know, tell him that he's gotta go. No weapon will prosper, still a strong tower, still a strong tower. that it's not by might and not by power, but by my spirit, says the Lord. We don't deny your power, Holy Spirit. You're, you are power. You are power, Holy Spirit. And we look to you and we acknowledge you in this room tonight, God. And I just declare right from my heart that you are a strong tower that we may run to continually, that you are that one by which we can hide under the shelter of your wings. And we, we declare you powerful tonight. We declare you mighty and mighty to save. And so we just worship you with everything that's on the inside tonight, God, because you're the same yesterday, today, and forever. And we acknowledge who you are tonight in Jesus' name. My fortress, my refuge, still a strong tower. Not 
by power, not by might, by the Spirit of the living, Spirit of the living. Would you join me in praying for our offering? Father, we exalt you and we lift up this offering to you. We present it to you, we give it to you, and we say, would you breathe on it, your breath of life? Would you breathe on it? Father, we take it and we offer it to you. Would you break it? Would you bless it and break it and multiply it, Father? Would you multiply it, Lord, over and over and over again in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. Hey, I just remembered um, we have been invited to contribute to the Messianic churches in Israel, to take up an offering for the Messianic churches. So I'm going to go ahead and invite Karen and Delyn up. They're going to lead us in prayer tonight. But if the Lord puts it on your heart, it is going to leave some buckets up here. And at any time during our service tonight, you can um, give another offering that will go specifically to the Messianic congregations. And if you're using our app online, Tithely, just in the memo section, oh, and here too, if you write a check or you fill out a, a credit report, um, would you just put in the memo, Israel? And then all the funds that are designated for Israel will go to the Messianic brothers and sisters in that nation. Okay, get your seatbelts off, because we're going. Come on up, girls. Thank you. That was awesome worship. Yes, Diana. Praise and everybody Jesus. else. <laughs> Excuse me. Karen, you want to grab your microphone? Okay, we have a stool. Are we going to sit on it together? There's no, two. That's There's another. You. That's for you. D, I just wanted to say that as you were sharing, um, I really see the Lord healing you. The Lord is restoring you. I see that... Um, you just coming into a whole new day, a whole new season of life and um, beauty and excitement. And um, God is healing your body, D. That's what I see. I just see it so clearly. He is, right? So that's like not even a prophecy. But I'm testifying. I'm in agreement with it. Amen. Okay. Care Bear, you're going to start. Oh, well. Just, that was awesome. Thank you guys for just getting us prepared, not by power nor by might, but by the spirit of the living God. And so I also was thinking as we were just worshiping, wherever we have um, limited God in any way by our own thoughts of, you know, will God do it? Can God do it? Will he do it for me? I know he can do it for you, but would he do it for me? And so just in all of the areas of um, just doubt and unbelief, let's just take it before the Lord and um, just put off all of the limitations. Because tonight we're going to be asking God for some big things, some for some really big things. And we appreciate every soul that is here and um, online. We just thank you for joining with us in prayer and uh, just come in agreement with heaven. We need to all um, knit our minds together, one mind, one accord in the most holiest of faith and the living word of God. And so I'm just going to um, just take authority over this room tonight. In the name of Jesus, and even you at home, we're just taking authority 
over our homes, over our businesses, over our families, wherever they are, in the name of Jesus. So, Father, we love you. We love you. We seek your heart, Father. And we come in agreement with who we are in Christ. That our fight is not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, powers, and rulers of darkness, and wicked spirits in high places. Father, I thank you that we are seated far above far above all principalities and powers and rulers of darkness, seated with Christ. Yes, Jesus. So we take authority right now yes. over this area, and we yes. bind the works of darkness in Jesus. the name of Jesus that would try to come against this meeting, yes. against our families, our homes, our businesses, yes. in the name of Jesus. And we say no, no, by the Spirit of the living God. We take authority over all lies and all destruction Jesus. in the name of Jesus. And we say, no, you can't have our minds. Amen. You can't have our families. You can't have our nation. You can't Amen. have Israel. You can't Amen. have the world in the name of Jesus. Jesus. So, Father, we are asking and coming in agreement right now on your behalf and coming in agreement with heaven and saying no to darkness. And yes, to the spirit of living God, we call forth the spirit of truth. So, Father, we thank you for the helmet of salvation, the mind of Christ, yes. the breastplate of righteousness. Our righteousness comes from Jesus Christ, the belt of truth, for you are the way, the truth, and the life. Our sandals, our feet are shod with the sandals, the gospel of peace, in the name of Jesus, the Prince of Peace. We pick up our sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. And man does not live by bread alone, but every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. In the shield of faith, Jesus Christ is the author and the finisher of our faith. And I thank you that faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the Word of God. In the name of Jesus. So, Father, we armor ourselves and we come in agreement with your Word tonight. Yes. And with who we are in Christ. So we put on Christ and we walk in him. Yes. We take authority right now. We say, put off the flesh man in the name of Jesus. Put off your emotions. This is not about emotion. This is about the spirit of the living God having his way here tonight in the name of Jesus. And Father, let love rule and reign in our hearts and in our minds, Father. Let love rule, Father. Let love rule. Thank you, Jesus. I just want to share with you all today. We were in prayer earlier, um, and Lenny was warfaring, and and I saw. I had a vision. Right. Of well, the land, yeah. And um, I had a vision of the Lord, and. First, he was in the Garden of Gethsemane, and he was um, literally pressing and crying out to Father, and blood, you know, he sweat blood, and that was the first drop in the garden, and I think I've shared that with you all before, a garden for a garden, the Garden of Eden for the Garden of Gethsemane, and then I saw Jesus in the courtyard and he was being charged and they were hitting him and, and beating him and blood was just splattering everywhere. And then um, I saw him walking and carrying the cross and being pushed and blood was spilling from our Lord. And... And then I saw, as they were crucifying him, more blood. His blood is speaking. It's speaking tonight. It's speaking on our behalf. You know, it's forever speaking. So when we come together tonight, we know that the blood of Jesus is speaking on our behalf. It's speaking. It's, it's crying out for souls. 
And that's why we're here. Because there's so much happening. There's so much happening in the world and only God knows the plots and the thoughts of man. Only God knows what's in somebody's heart. The heart is wicked, who could know it? But that blood was spilled for all of it. And so, let's just come in agreement with the beautiful blood that is speaking on our behalf tonight. That blood is love. That's the greatest love. It's just the greatest love, and he loves us all. He does. And there's a lot of people that are misguided, or they're doing something like Saul before he became Paul. You know, they think they're doing right, but they're not. They're being led by the wrong spirit. So we want the spirit of truth to come in and uproot and remove all deception. The spirit of truth to annihilate lies in the name of Jesus. The spirit of truth that speaks and says, I love you. I love you. I love you so much that I pulled you. I snatched you out of hell. I snatched your soul out of hell. So that's the greatest love. Love, no greater love than to lay one's life down for another. So, as we go forth tonight, let's love rule and reign in our hearts and our minds. In the name of Jesus. Thank you. Okay. I wanted to share what I believe is a... a um, a corporate word and it is the ministry of reconciliation and I just got back from Florida I was gone I went to Florida and I went there to see my dad I went there to see our friend Terry that you guys might remember but I went there to see my dad and um, I had not spoken, I had not, I have not seen my father in 30 years. Um, he left when I was 16 and I saw him maybe once every 10 years until I had veto and that was the last time I ever saw him and he lived in Florida and uh, I lived here and um, thank you, Allie. And, um, uh, thank you. So I started calling him. It was real, I was really nervous because he's authority to me still, even though I haven't seen him in all these years. And because I really, uh, um, respect him, but I missed him so much. So I started calling him once a year for Christmas for like the last four or five years. I was really nervous every time I called. I was shaking, and it was awkward. And I, I finally, Karen and I went, and Karen went with me, and she was a real sister. She walked with me. And I went and I, I hugged my dad. And he was thinking some things that weren't true about me, and I was thinking some things that were not true about him. And that scripture of lay your gift to the altar and go and be reconciled to your brother. And if your brother has aught with you, go to him. And I've been speaking this ministry of reconciliation, ministry of reconciliation, ministry of reconciliation. And then I was reconciled. And then I was reconciled to my dad after 30 years. And when war broke out, and we've had, we've, we've had wars in the earth, I know, but the Lord has been preparing me for war for the last several years. I've been praying over the radio for two years and every single Thursday, I, well, it's Saturday. It airs on Saturday, but I pray on Thursday. I say, war is coming, war is coming, war is coming. And um, we are now in a time, we are wartime intercessors now. We are now the wartime church. 
things, we're going to have to really learn how to do the Lord. We're going to have to really learn how to yield ourselves and let the Lord do us. And it's going to require that we don't think the way we used to, that we put a lot of our own understanding. You guys, we think some things that just aren't true about nations. We think some things that are just not true. And they think some things that are just not true. Israel thinks some things right now that just aren't true. And so does Palestine. And so does Iran. And so do all these nations. And so what we want to do is find the heart of our Father and find each other's heart and come into agreement. And the one thing I do know is, um, Dee, you were going to read that scripture. Um, as you're coming up here, I just want to pray this over us right now. I pray and I speak and I proclaim and I decree and I declare sanctification over all of our vision. Yes. In Jesus' name. There's something called the fog of war. Larry could probably tell us about that. The fog of war. What you're seeing may not really be what you think you're seeing. And what you're hearing may not really be what you think you're hearing. And I'm not saying you can't believe your eyes. I'm just saying... <laughs> This is the fog of war we're in right now. So we cannot be moved by our emotions and we cannot be, we have to really possess our own soul right now and do not allow ourselves to be emotionally manipulated. So I speak, before you read the scripture, but I speak right now sanctification over our ears because we've been, we've heard a lot. We've seen a lot of videos. We've, we've heard a lot of stuff. We've heard a lot of threats. We've heard some lies and we've heard some truth. I speak and proclaim sanctification over our own mouth, over our mouth in Jesus' name, that the Lord sanctify our tongue in Jesus' name, and that we will not speak according to our own understanding. We will not lean on our own understanding, not even if it's been incredibly indoctrinated into us through the generations. You guys, it's a big deal to put off indoctrination. And if we don't understand, if you don't understand what I'm talking about, ask the Lord to lead you and guide you into all truth. So we need each other. We need each other tonight. I can't no, no, I mean, this is way above our pay grade, guys. We need the Lord to direct us right now. And I also speak and proclaim and decree sanctification over those things that we've touched, that the Lord sanctify us from the things that we put our hands to, put our feet to, that He cleanse us, that we don't presume to come before Him in our own opinions. This is important that we speak and proclaim and decree and declare according to his will because Peter said, no, 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 Jesus, don't say you're gonna die. And Jesus said, you are mindful of the things of man and not the things of God. We need to be mindful of the things of God. And, and so it's, it's not easy to discern. But this scripture the Lord gave us yesterday and I feel like this, when I read it, I was like, oh, it hit me like a ton of bricks. This is a foundation. Yesterday, go ahead, D. Nahum 1 5 shows. And it hit me like a ton of bricks because I am exactly, I am a product of exactly what uh, Dylan is praying because God has been working in me, working out a lot of indoctrination. You know, I went to Bible college many, many years ago. I took a covenant class in um, understanding God and the doctrines and the covenants. And I mean, I know I'm forwards and backwards, backwards and forwards. But some things happen differently. I have been renewed in my spirit and boy, have I been knocked off my horse to understand. It's not by my intellect and understanding of every word and dot and tittle, but it's by the spirit of the living God that I will be able to stand in the positions of authority. And so this word that Delin shared today hit me deeply because I've been meditating as we were praying the armor, like we've been praying it over the last few prayer, um, corporate prayer meetings. And Karen started out with it today. It hit me again in Ephesians 6, 13. It talks about the sandal of the preparation of gospel of peace. So when Delin shared this scripture today out of Nahum 1.15, behold on the mountains the feet of him who brings good tidings, who proclaims peace. O Judah, keep your appointed feasts, perform your vows, for the wicked one shall no more pass through you. 
he is utterly cut off. So Dylan was sharing about how we come in a representation, the feet of him who brings good tidings, proclaim peace. And boom, it hit me. Oh God, that's what you've been trying to talk to me about when I've been praying this armor. You've been saying, oh, what does that mean? The sound of the preparation of gospel of peace. That's what it means. And there are other scripture references. I won't read all of them, that there's a perfect circle because out of Nahum 115 comes Romans 1015. Write it down if you can. Same scripture is coming back. And then out of Romans 1015, it goes into Isaiah 52, 7. And then I shared that one today. And then Pastor Steve, God bless our pastors and our leaders. I'm just going to tell you. Segue, if you've ever seen that little video where the little kid sits down to this piano concerto's piano and he starts banging out bing, 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 bing. And everybody's in like they're flabbergasted. Like how could that kid get up in this big piano concerto and start hitting the little keys and he's in this big concerto performer is about ready to perform. He comes, he throws up the tails of his coat, sits alongside the kid and plays a beautiful masterpiece along that little kid's plink plinks. I want to tell you, when we enter into covenant like Delyn said, and like Karen said, and we're agreeing with the word of God by the spirit, not by our intellect. It is a little fragment of understanding that we get, but God keeps breathing on it and we bring it. So I brought it today and shared that one little bit of 52.7, Isaiah 52.7. And Pastor Steve came and played the concerto around it. Because I want to tell you, we have seasoned and educated, that's not the word, seasoned and yielded vessels of the Lord who have grown in understanding and wisdom but are so submitted to Holy Spirit that they keep going back around to not by might nor by power but by the Spirit of the living God not by my own intellect but by your will O Lord and they're led so I don't care how many years in the Lord someone has been in their maturity or how many years they've been saved it is still the returning over and over and again so Nahum 115 Stand of the preparation of the gospel of feet, Ephesians 6.13, Isaiah 52.7, and then there's Romans 10.15, and it comes back full circle. We are commissioned to make that step into agreement with heaven above here on earth in peace. No matter what we can see yet fully revealed in heaven that we are contending for in faith, we hold our position in peace and make a declaration in Jesus' name. Isaiah 52. It's a continuation of the scripture. It's a continuation. So Isaiah 52, 10. The Lord God has made bare his holy arm in the eyes of all the nations. And all the ends of the earth shall see the salvation of our God. Praise the Lord. So what I would love to do is to pray over Israel first and foremost tonight. So I don't, can somebody, and, and guys, please just be so utterly free. Like, please come and use the microphone. Yes. I can't. This is a lot. This, this is, is a lot. We can't. We, we need everybody, right? This is why we're doing this on Wednesday nights, which is pretty ironic. I was telling Pastor Steve, read, uh, you know, that I had read um, Reese Howell's Intercessor. And I said, Pastor Steve, he was a wartime intercessor. And I told him that like three or four weeks ago. Now I'm like, ooh. Okay. <laughs> anyway, can somebody, I think we should all lay hands on the flag. Right. Yes. David, you want to hold and the David, Israel flag? Yeah. And maybe he should bring it over yes, here come by the microphone. Help, David. And can we bring Strong it? young man. And we're going to all gather around this flag. And if... if I want to bring it by the microphone. Yeah, bring it by the microphone, David. Yeah. So everybody, whoever's praying, can pray right into that microphone. Yes. Thank you so much. This, our prayer for Israel is not saying that we believe Israel is innocent in all things. Because it's not. And neither is my family. Neither is my, and neither am I. But we're going to pray for Israel because we Praise love Israel. You. We love you. We love Israel. We yes, love our nation. We, we love all the nations of the earth. Yes. But we love Israel. And we love the people. We love the people. Okay. So, Father, in the name of Jesus, we lift, we lift up your precious Israel to you, Father. Father, we come in agreement with heaven for salvation for souls, Father. We're asking for souls in the name of Jesus, Lord, 
that you would give them dreams, give them visions, meet them at the bedside. Father, meet them in the grocery store, however you want to do it. We're asking, Father, that you would open the eyes of their understanding, Father. We, we just come in agreement, Father, and we bind up all destruction and Amen. all deception Jesus off the hearts name. and the minds that says Jesus, Jesus is name. not the Lord. Yeah, we bind that antichrist spirit that Jesus would try to keep name. people in bondage yeah, and not coming into the full knowledge of your son, Jesus Christ, the yes, true Lord. Messiah. Yes. Father, they're calling out for a Messiah to reveal himself. We're asking you, Jesus Christ, the true Messiah, to reveal yourself to the people, Father, in the name of Jesus. Father, that you would come and invade hearts and minds, Lord. Father, that you would send your laborers that would speak boldly and say, I know you're praying for the Messiah, but he's already come and gone, and now he's wanting to know you and to know you intimately and to take away your sin and to deliver you out of the old ways of life and the old ways of doing things. But there is a God that loves you and knows your name and put every hair on your head. Father, we are asking that you would just do that, Father. That you would not only invade um, Israel, Father, but I'm asking you would invade Palestine with your spirit, Father. Would you invade Palestine, that you would invade Lebanon, that you would invade Iran, that you would invade Iraq, Father, that you would invade Afghanistan, Father, in the name of Jesus, that you would pierce through the darkness, the, the principalities of that region that is keeping the spirit of yes. the living God from coming forth. Yes. Father, that you would battle in the heavenlies on their behalf, Father, and push off the works of destruction and terrorism in the name of Jesus. Father, that the spirit of truth would rule and reign. Yes, Father, and save and drop people to their knees and say, what have I done? I was misled. Father, that you would take hatred up and out and feed them with love, Father. That love would invade the hearts and the minds. That they would see the people the way you see them, Father. In the name of Jesus, Father. That you would redeem the ground in every area, Father, where it's holy. It's holy, Father. I know that land is so holy. It's so holy, Father. Father, that they would fall to their knees and repent. Father, I pray for a heart of repentance. Father, a heart of repentance that is killed, or even killed with words, or just even the, the assault in their own hearts. Father, that you would bring life, Father. That you would bring life. In Jesus' name, Father that truth would come, Father, yes. that you would just invade the minds that is believed a lie, like Lenny prayed reconciliation, Father. Every lie would be uprooted and removed, Father, that they would see from your perspective. We ask for 2020 vision for the realm of the Spirit in the name of Jesus, Father, that they would see with your eyes the beauty of the land and the beauty of the people, Father. And even Israel looking outside, Father, that they would see the beauty in Gaza, that they would see the beauty in Pakistan and in Jordan and Syria and all the lands that are surrounding, that we can see each other with your eyes, Lord, with the eyes of love, that the eyes of love, Father, would come forth in the hearts and the minds, Lord. Amen. I was, I was asking David to pray, and he said, no, I'm trying to reach in still to get something. So he said, you pray. Before I pray, I'd like to read Psalm 122, verse 6. Now, many of us just know the first part of that verse. Pray for the peace of Jerusalem. And of course, we're praying for the peace to be there in the Middle East. But then the next part of that verse is someone that is a verse that we sometimes forget to add to it. It says, may they prosper who love you. And the thing that came to me is that perfect love cast out all fear. 
And we know that they've been barraged with rockets and kidnappings, men and women and children. And the enemy would try to hit them with fear. But as I believe, as we project our love to Israel, and we pray our love toward Israel, yes. we will cast out fear among the, the men and women and the soldiers, the government leaders, the healthcare we, the lead, uh, people that are in hospitals that are overwhelmed now. We pray. We pray for the, the love for Israel. And it goes on to say, peace be within your walls, Israel. Yes. Amen. Prosperity within your palaces and your buildings. For the sake of my brethren and companions, I will now say, peace be within you. And the last verse 9 says, because of the house of the Lord our God, I will seek your good. We pray for the goodness of God in the land of the living. David said, I would have despaired lest I would see the goodness of God in the land of the living for me and for the nation. And so, Lord, we pray your goodness. We pray your forgiveness over Israel, a nation that has become very secular in Jewish in name only. And Lord, we pray that they will return to you. As is prophesied by the Apostle Paul in the book of Romans, all of Israel would come back. All of Israel would be saved. So we project, we declare, we prophesy our love of Christ in us to the land of Israel, to every mother, father, child, grandparent, great-grandparent. We project, we send the love of God to Israel. And I declare also the last chapter of Micah, the last few verses. It says in Micah 7, verse 15, as in the days when you came out of the land of Egypt, I will show them, that is Israel, wonders. Yes. The nation shall see and be ashamed of all their might, that is, their military might, their psychological attempts, their misinformation. They will put their hand over their mouth and their ears shall be deaf. They shall lick the dust like a serpent. They shall crawl from their holes like snakes of the earth. They shall be afraid of the Lord our God not by the military equipment, but by the Lord our God. The same Syrian guy that saw the angels behind the Israel's army in the 50 years ago in the Yom Kippur Wars. And he said, we cannot win this battle because the Lord is on their side. They will be afraid of the Lord their God and shall fear because of you, Lord. Who is a God like you? Pardoning iniquity and passing over the transgressions or the disobedience of the remnant of his inheritance. That is the mercy you're going to show to Israel. He does not retain his anger forever because he, the Lord God, delights in mercy. He will again have compassion on us, on Israel, and he will subdue and take over our iniquities. You, God, will cast all of our sins into the depths of the sea. We claim that for Israel, for us, for America, for the two nations that have covenants spoken over them. You will give truth to Jacob. And listen to this. And mercy to Abraham and his descendants. And we've been grafted into the seed of great Abraham as well with the Jews, which you have sworn to our fathers from days of old. Lord, we thank you for your forgiveness of the iniquity of Israel and the United States yes. and passing over the transgressions for the remnant church here. 
and for the remnant of those in Israel, that you will show yourself merciful because you delight in mercy. We release your mercy. We release your love. Yes, we release Lord. your peace yes. over Israel in Jesus' name. Does anybody else want to pray for Israel? We thank the Lord because his word has been established from of, from of old, as the scripture says. Zechariah 12.10. I will pour on the house of David and on the inhabitants of Jerusalem the spirit of grace and supplication. Then they will look on me whom they pierced. Yes, they will mourn for him as he one mourns for his only son and grieve for him as one grieves for a firstborn. Lord, you are sovereign over everything you are the one that's going to restore Israel if you are able Lord to bring the gospel to the Gentiles who knew nothing about you as it is written I was sought by those who I did not know we know, Father, Lord, you're going to bring this back. Perhaps we want to be in agreement with this. They will look on you whom they pierced, Lord Jesus. Thank you for the spirit of repentance that is upon us all tonight. Thank you for the spirit of supplication that is upon us tonight. We speak the peace of Jerusalem over Israel. Lord Jesus, open the eyes. Let the veil be cut off that covers the eyes of those that do not know me yet. That this might be fulfilled which was written long before you came in the flesh. Thank you, Lord. We bless Israel. We bless the people of Israel. We bless the people around Israel. We say, of Persia of old Iran, come into the fullness of the gospel. We throw Syria, Damascus, come to the fullness of that gospel. We say to Egypt, come into the fullness of the gospel. Yes. Lebanon, all we Gentiles who are going to bow before the King of Kings yes. who is going to rule from Jerusalem the Lord Jesus our Lord and Savior we thank you Lord we bless you we acknowledge you Lord you are preeminent in all things thank you Lord Hosanna, Hosanna, save, Lord. Even as when you entered in and you asked us to just cry out to you and say, save, Lord. That's all I can think of right now, Lord. Hosanna, save, Lord. Save, Lord. Save your people. Save their souls and come in and rescue them as the mighty king. We release all of the angels of heaven. Lord, you release the angels. That is your authority to do, to come and fight on their behalf. Let them be victorious. Let them be a mighty testimony in all of the world. Let your elder brother be, be, fulfill his destiny in being a testimony to the world. And let people know that you are their God yes. and that you fight for them yes. and you stand for them. Yes, Lord. Lord, let the, the scales fall from the eyes of everyone in the world and let them see truth, your truth, as it really is and understand 
the importance of, of your chosen people of Israel. Let yes. them realize that your word is true and this land belongs to them and yes. let everyone else get behind them. Yes, Lord. But Lord, save. Fight for your people and yes, save. Lord. We pray for the peace of Jerusalem and yes. for all of Israel and we believe that all yes. of Israel will be saved. Yes, yes Lord. Save, Lord. Hosanna. Yes. Hosanna. I was, when I first got here, um, some of you know me, I'm Savan. I have family back in Israel, and thank God they're okay, but yeah. So when I first got here, I had a vision, and it was Jesus in the boat, and I was in there sleeping, and he was rowing, and then the, the like, sea started opening up, and I'm like, okay, what does that mean? So then he brought me to Exodus 14:10. As Pharaoh approached the Israelites, looked up and saw the Egyptians marching after them, and they were terrified and cried out to the Lord. They said to Moses, was it because there were no graves in Egypt that you brought us into the wilderness to die? What have you done to us by bringing us out of Egypt? Did we not say to you in Egypt, leave us alone so that we can serve the Egyptians? For it would have been better for us to serve the Egyptians than to die in the wilderness. But Moses told the people, do not be afraid, stand firm and you will see the Lord's salvation, which he will accomplish for you today. For the Egyptians you will see today, you will never see again. So I'll say that again, <laughs> it's so good. But Moses told the people, do not be afraid, stand firm and you will see the Lord's salvation. So, so Father, we thank you that Israel and even everybody here in Camarillo, that God, we will see the Lord's salvation. For the people that are have been praying for your family members, for you that have felt like, is the promise gonna ever happen? Like you feel like you've been waiting and waiting and you feel like you can't, I feel like he wants me to tell you like, if you guys feel like you can't feel him, where is he? It's because he's behind you and he's fighting. And he he has a might he has a mighty army and I'm sorry but you know the enemy is insane and the enemy doesn't understand that Gabriel and Michael the Lord told me this they're still growing. They those angels are still growing. And the enemy he's outnumbered. So he can't he's anyways we're just continuing to grow. So let me finish this up. Um, hope you understand what I was saying right there. But um, so the Lord will fight for you. This is for all of you guys too, okay? You need only to be still. So in the boat, I was still and I was sleeping. So to be still and know. This is like confirmation of what everybody's saying right now. Here's the last part. Parting the Red Sea. So we're in a parting, we're parting the Red Sea moment. That's where we're at right now. Thank you, Father. So then the Lord said to Moses, why are you crying out to me? Tell the Israelites to go forward. So continue to move forward, no matter what it looks like, you guys. Continue to move forward in your promises that you know the Lord has given you. Okay? I feel like somebody has been trying to uh, have a baby for a while now. And I just want to let you guys know that the Lord says move forward. Continue to move forward and give it to me and just leave it. Maybe there's somebody online. You guys have been trying to get pregnant. Move forward. Be still. He's got it. And as for, as for you, lift up your staff and stretch out your hand over the sea and divide it so that the Israelites can go through the sea on dry ground. And I will harden the hearts of the Egyptians, this is talking about what's going on right now, so that they will go in after them. Then I will gain honor by means of Pharaoh and all of his army and chariots and horsemen. The Egyptians will know that I am the Lord when I am honored through Pharaoh, his chariots, and his horsemen. And the angel of God who had gone before the camp of Israel withdrew and went behind them. The pillar of the cloud also moved from, be, from before them and stood behind them. So that's, that's confirmation that he's behind. If you feel like you can't feel him, he's behind. The cloud was there in the darkness, but it lit up. It lit up the night. So all night long, neither camp went near the other. So the Lord is now healing. He's healing. And I do feel like um, 
what are we in October? October 17th. Is, so 17 is the day of victory. So um, in the Hebrew, um, right? 17 is in the in the calendar. Yeah, I'm really not that good at this stuff, but I should. So in the Hebrew. Can you say that one more time because I didn't hear that. In the Hebrew calendar, uh -huh. what is it? Lunar. Yeah. Right. So what is seven, October 17th? So the number 17, the Lord has shown me, is victory. It's the, it's the number of victory. So he's been showing me that I'm supposed to speak out that the number, so it's possibly on October 17th, there's going to be victory for a lot of people and for Israel. But he also said that salvation is today. So I also felt like we were supposed to shake the flag. We can do that later. And it was like, we're going to shake things off of Israel right now. And I felt a really... Just do it now. Okay, I'll just yeah. do it now. Yelama, hi, Yelama, hi, Yelama, hi, Yelama, hi, Yelama, hi, Yelama, help me shake it off, Thank Israel. you, Father. And also yeah. off Thank everybody you, else who's feeling stiff. Thank you, Lord. <laughs> I, like, I like these girls. So, so Father, I just thank you, and I just release this blessing upon all your people. Yes. We just shake it off. We shake yes. it off, Israel. Jesus we break name. it off. Yes. We break it off. And we Jesus. just praise you, Lord. I cover everybody in the blood of Jesus. I also saw a weird, this is the last thing I'm going to say. I saw this weird witch lady come up out of the sea, and she, she was like a serpent, and she had like no, she had like a tail. And I saw that the Lord took her witch hat off. <laughs> Praise God. And then she bowed down yes. and was and realized that he is the Lord. So, you know, when we, we talk about witches and stuff, you know, they're also people. Some of these people are deceived. Like, people just don't know the truth. So thank you, Lord. We just release love yes, over Lord, everyone. Lord. There's no yes. judgment. Yes. Love, love, yes. love, love, love. Yes. In Jesus' name, amen. In Jesus' name. And I'd like to tag on to you. Which one is Saban? Saban, I want to tag on because Lord gave me Exodus 15. Then Moses sang and the children of uh, and the children of Israel this song unto the Lord and spoke, saying, I will sing unto the Lord, for he has triumphed gloriously. The horse and the rider has he thrown into the sea in the name of Jesus. The Lord is my strength and my song, and he has become my salvation. He is my God, and I will prepare him a whole uh, a habitation, my Father's God, and I will exalt him. The Lord is a man of war. The Lord is his name. So thank you, Father, for that awesome word. Father, we thank you that this battle belongs to you, Father. We just thank you for what you're doing, Lord. We can't see all that's happening, but you can see and you know all things and you know the end of the story. And the end of the story is we win in Christ Jesus. Come on up, please, sister. In the name of Jesus. That confirms what the Lord just told me to speak in Hebrew. Oh, praise God. So this is what he told me to say. Biyad chazaka Adonai this is what he told me for your mighty hand Lord you will prevail over your people in Israel bless your holy name amen, That's what he gave me to amen. Say, so. thank you Lord thank you for always confirming your word go ahead Larry be an intercessor <clears throat> you're going to go through a lot of change the Lord's going to start telling you things you never realized before because if you're going to pray he wants you to pray right <laughs> and you only pray right if you do what he tells you and so uh, Eddie was reading from um, praise you While you're looking for that, Larry, I'm just yeah, gonna, we were going to I'm do gonna... another um, scripture for all of us to our sister in prayer today. I don't see her right now. Had suggested Psalm 83 that we all speak that together. Um, 
you didn't find it yet. Um, I, I do yeah, I want to pray because we're going to end soon, and I do want to pray for Palestine. And, and if there's anybody who will stand up and pray for Palestine. Okay, David, so as soon as he's done, um, you can do that. That'd be awesome. Zechariah uh, 10 and that was in the middle of it but there's a lot more in Zechariah uh, about Israel and it's equally important and so I wanted to read um, the rest of it um, let's see 10 12 you read What was, what was the verse you read? Uh, it? it was verse 10, chapter. Cha oh, I had him turned around. Okay. I mean, I know it because I've been, I've been praying from it all day and bringing it up in the, in the uh, prayer meetings. Um, so I want to start from the beginning of 12 and, and read through 13 because... The Lord started telling me to pray for Israel, and I didn't pray for him that much. I, I prayed for him as a mission field, because I'm interested in that. And I, I just saw him as a, a needy nation that needed to be straightened out. And uh, just in plain words and how I think. And um, the Lord said, no, pray for Israel, pray for Israel. And... He, he impressed upon me that he has two covenant nations, Israel and America. They're a covenant nation, Israel, for obvious reasons. I mean, everything's from there. The whole history, uh, we're grafted in to their history and to the Old Testament. And even in the New Testament, um, their future is written. And it's very strong and it's not written about this country, although we'll be in there somewhere, but it's written about Israel. And Zechariah is one of the places. And it says, this is the word of the Lord concerning Israel. The Lord who stretches out the heavens, who lays the foundation of the earth, and who forms the spirit of man within him declares, I'm going to make Jerusalem a cup that sends all the surrounding peoples reeling. Judah will be besieged as well as Jerusalem. On that day when all the nations of the earth are gathered against her, I will make Jerusalem an immovable rock for all the nations. All who try to move it will injure themselves. On that day I will strike every horse with panic and its rider with madness, declares the Lord. I will keep a watchful eye over the house of Judah, but I will bind all the horses of the nations. Then the leaders of Judah will say in their hearts, the people of Jerusalem are strong because the Lord Almighty is their God. From that day, I will make the leaders of Judah like a fire pot in a wood pile, like a flaming torch among sheaves. They will consume right and left all the surrounding peoples, and Jerusalem will remain intact in her place. The Lord will save the dwellings of Judah first, so that the honor of the house of David and Jerusalem's inhabitants may not be greater than that of Judah. On that day, the Lord will yield those who live in Jerusalem, so that the feeblest among them will be like David, and the house of David will be like God, and the angel of the Lord going before them. On that day, I will set out to destroy all the nations that attack Jerusalem. Now, we've seen some of this, because when Israel became a nation, um, we saw some of this, but it's not done. That, that's just the first stage. And, um, Larry, what scripture are you on, please? Huh? What scripture? Oh, I'm, I'm in uh, Zechariah 12. Which I, verse? We read, he started, um, Eddie started reading the verse again. Okay, Dan. And, okay. and I'm up to, and, but there's, there's more. Uh, 
uh, to it and yeah, keep tent going. fits in here and okay. then there's more after it. Okay. Where are you starting from so we can let the Israel. projection? I started from Zechariah uh, chapter 1. Uh, uh, very, uh, chapter 12, I'm sorry. Verse 1. And what verse are you on right this second? Uh, I'm about to go where, where Eddie was. Uh, uh, 12, chapter 12, 10. verse 10. 10. That's where we're going. Because right that's now. pivotal. Okay. I just want to put it up there on the thing. For everybody okay. to read along with you. All right. So read it. So, um, and I will pour out in the house of David inhabitants a spirit of grace and supplication. They will look upon me, the one that they've pierced, and they will mourn for him as one mourns for an only child, and grieve bitterly for him as one grieves for a firstborn son. On that day, the weeping in Jerusalem will be great, like the weeping of her dad, Ramon, on the plain of Megiddo. The land will mourn each clan by itself, with their wives by themselves, the clan of the house of David and their wives, the clan of the house of Nathan and their wives, the clan of the house of Levi and their wives, the clan of Shemel and their wives, and all the rest of the clans. And there was, now this has not happened yet. So I know we're going into the future here, that Zechariah is going into things we haven't seen yet. And they're more exciting than what we've seen. I mean, not only isn't God through with Israel, he's just getting started. And that's, that's the point. And then uh, chapter 13, let's see. There says, on that day a fountain will be opened in the house of David and the inhabitants of Jerusalem to cleanse them from sin and impurity. On that day, I will banish the names of the idols from the land and they will be remembered no more, declares the Lord Almighty. I will remove both the prophets and the spirit of impurity from the land. And if anyone still prophesies, it goes on. And it goes on with more like that. So there's a, a lot to come. But the Lord said, yeah, Americans think it's about America. And I'm going to use them. But it's about Israel even more. That's the apple of God's eye. That's who he's always worked through. And he's going to continue to work through them. But we have a big part of it, part in it. But keep your eye on Israel and keep your ear if you're an intercessor on how to intercede for Israel because I, I believe that's a major assignment for intercessors right now. Okay. Thank you, Larry. David, We need. I want to pray for Palestine. I don't want to neglect that part. So, Lord, we just lift up the people of Palestine, God, the, the Arabic people who live in that area of the world. And we just bless them in the name of Jesus. We just speak life. We thank you that you are King Yeshua, that you rule and reign over these people, God, that you rule and reign over them. Whether or not they acknowledge you, Lord, you rule and reign. And I, I've just heard stories for years, for like the last five, six years about people in the Middle East who are full-blown, uh, just super shut away from any idea of, of King Yeshua, and they get dreams and visions of the man in white in the middle of the night, and these people wake up, and all of a sudden they, they are going to go to the very Christians that they were going to go kill the next day, and they, they drop to their knees, and they repent, and they just say, I need Jesus. Lord, we just speak more of that over these people, yes. over yes. over both sides, over both over the whole situation going on yes. over there. We speak peace to that part of the world in the name yes. of Jesus. Yes. We speak peace that it, it is about King Yeshua. Yes. It is about King Yeshua, Lord. Yes. It is about yes. King Yeshua. So we just speak life over the Palestinian people. Yes, we speak life over the West Bank and over the Gaza yes, Strip and yes. the Golan Heights and all the areas yes, where the, yes. the Arabic people have been pushed, pushed out of their land, pushed out of the area where they have been. And we just speak peace that there is unity between yes. the Jewish people and the Arabic people who yes, live there because Lord. these people are brothers and sisters and cousins, Lord. People are related, God. You created so many different cultures and people because that's how you see people, Lord. Because, Jesus, you're a little bit Nigerian 
and Chinese and Japanese and, and Afghani and Russian and Irish and, and Ugandan and Australian and Native American, all these cultures are inside of you, Lord, because yes. you love people. So you created people and you poured yourself out over all these different lands, over all these different people so that people can be unified in you, so that people can acknowledge you, Lord God. So we speak to this group of people and we thank you that they are a people that are called sons and daughters of the Most High God, that you are calling this group of people in to fellowship with you, into salvation with you, into healing with you, into life and relationship with you, Holy Spirit. Spirit, we just bless the people of Palestine. Yes, we Lord. bless them. We bless them. We bless them. Yes, we do Lord. not curse Palestine. We yes, do not curse Palestine. We bless the Palestinian people. Yes, we Lord. bless the Palestinian yes, people. Yes, we bless the Palestinian people yes, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus Yeshua Christ HaMashiach, the, the true and living God, the only one. We bless these people yes, in Yeshua's name. Amen. Amen. Jesus' name. Yes. Thank you, David. I said, David, um, the Lord spoke to me. It ties in with that. Psalm 46, verse 4. There is a river whose streams shall make glad the city of God. That's Jerusalem. And that river in Revelation chapter 22 says that river will have trees on each side of it that will be for the healing of the nations. I believe from Jerusalem we will see healing for all people groups and all nations flow from Jerusalem. And it goes on to say the holy place where the tabernacle of the Most High is. God is in the midst of her that is in Jerusalem. She will not be moved. God will help her just at the break of dawn. And I believe that we will see the healing, the fruit, also the harvest of souls. Yes. There's fruit on that tree, but there's also leaves that people have gone to heaven that says the people that need healing will be eating the leaves of the tree. And I believe that we're going to see God bring together the, the sons of Esau and the sons of Jacob because they have the same patriarch, Abraham. And I believe all of the peoples, all the lands around them, all religions, Hindu, Buddhist, Muslim, Jew, and Christian, God is going to use Jerusalem because the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords will rule from Jerusalem. Lord, thank you. Thank you. We release the healing. The healing from all the hurts, all the animosities, all the bad history, all the contrived histories in some cases, and all the histories that have been overemphasized or underemphasized, whatever it may be, Lord. The hearing ears of the people, the children, Lord, the children will receive this new move of your spirit now. Just as in Iran, we see the ones leading the way that are becoming Christians are the youth right now. We declare the children, the children will no longer scream out words of hatred, but the children will play one with one another in the streets. And the word of the Lord to all Jew and Gentile alike will be for unity and oneness. Lord, you will bring it. You will bring salvation to all peoples. And it will flow from this river that flows from the throne room of God in Jerusalem. We release the flow of that river, Lord. The healing from that river to all nations in Jesus' name. Um, I'm, I just want to speak to Iran real fast since they're, um, they just got a lot of money and they're funding a lot of the terrorism that's going to be, well, in Jesus' name, I don't want to speak it out, what they're, what they're saying they're going to do. But the 
people of Iran, you know, they've got a big giant piazza area, open area, and there's a flag of the United States on the ground, and there's a flag of Israel on the ground. Are y'all familiar with that? And they, they painted them on the ground so they could walk over them all the time. But right now, the people, the regular, normal Joe Blow people are refusing to walk on the flags, either American flag or the Israeli flag. They're, they're like, like if it's a big giant square, they're kind of going like this around it. They're refusing to walk on the flag. So we didn't get to Iran tonight, but I, um, next Wednesday, as we continue through this season, we will try to lift up as many nations as possible. What we want to close with now is just to pray. If we could all pray in agreement, um, and I'll, I'll just be in agreement. And if somebody really has a, a, an, a word or something, come and share it. Um, just for the healing of everyone that has suffered. So, Father, in Jesus' name, Lord, Father, we just pray, Father God, that you would please turn your face toward us, Lord, that you would regard your people, Lord. And, Father, we're asking that you come, Lord, and that you comfort and that you heal and that you redeem and that you restore in Jesus' name. Every single solitary family, Lord yes, God, Lord. every single mother who is crying, every single father who is crying, every single child who is crying, every single child who is lost, Lord, uh, lost family members, wounded, Father God, devastated, Father, in Jesus' name. And in some cases, um, Lord, you know, you see the violence. And so, Father, we just reject the spirit of violence, Lord, in That's Jesus' right. name. We reject. we reject it in the name of Jesus. The sons of God stand up in California and say no. In the name of Jesus, we speak to you to back up in Jesus' name. You violent spirit, we rebuke you in the name of Jesus Christ. We reject you in the name of Jesus Christ. We resist you in the name of Jesus Christ. And I thank you, Father, that you've given us authority to legislate. And so, Lord, I pray that you help us to gird up the loins of our mind and understand the power of life and death that's in our own tongues. Yes. So, Father, while we opened up and asking you to forgive us for the things that we have spoken amiss, yes. Father, we bless you for sanctifying our tongue and that we speak and proclaim and decree your life everlasting. Yes, Lord. Father, yes. and to reject the works of darkness, yes. Lord, in Jesus' name. So we reject the works of darkness in Jesus' name. And Father, we proclaim, he, and Lord, for every single Christian that's in that region right now, that your spirit will come upon them. Yes, They'll Lord. know what to say. Yes, They'll know Lord. what to do. Yes, They'll be the Lord. ones to help comfort and oh, say, turn to Jesus Christ. He's yes. the true living God. Yes, Lord, you can do. Lord, I just ask you for mighty miracles in the land. Yes, Mighty Lord. miracles, Lord yes, God, Lord. in Jesus' name. Lord, you know how to work all things together for good, Father. Yes, Lord. So, Lord, I thank you for uprooting fear yes, in Jesus' Lord. name. Uprooting all emotional ma manipulation, Father God. Oh, witchcraft, in the name of Jesus Christ. And, Father God, I speak a sound mind right now over the people of the land. In yes, Jesus' Lord. name, I speak healing to you in Jesus' mighty name. Yes, that you be saved to the uttermost, you be delivered to the uttermost. Yes, Lord. And restoration and the spirit of reconciliation, the ministry of yes, reconciliation Lord. to be loosed in the land and on the whole earth. Father, that we pray big. You're a big God. You're an awesome God. You're a mighty God. Forgive us for putting you in boxes, little baby boxes. Father. In Jesus' name, you're able to move across the whole land and keep us all from bondage. Father, in Jesus' name. So, Lord, we cut off this war mongering and war mechanism and military in in uh, complex, uh, MIC. In Jesus' name, Lord, for bankers and all these other guys that want this, Father, we reject it. In Jesus' name. We reject it. The sons of God reject it. In Jesus' name. So I plead the blood of Jesus over every one of us. Yes. I thank you, Lord, that you bless our going out and our coming in. We love you and bless you and honor you and thank you for your blessing to be upon Jubilee, Lord. Yes. In Jesus' name. Amen.